Okay, so this is really muddy and wet and we're basically sliding down here. We're not on the side of any ledges or anything. Don't move, I'm coming to you, don't move. Okay, Will. Yep. Oh, shoot. Okay, your wheel is turned this way, but you're just gonna keep sliding. No, 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 you're gonna just keep sliding that way because your front wheel isn't getting any traction, okay? In 2014, we sold all of our possessions, quit our jobs, and set off as a family for a one-year adventure in Costa Rica. The one year was not enough, so we rolled up our sleeves and figured out how to make this journey continue. We are world towning. Join our family, Largo, Jessica, Avalon, and Will, as we travel the world to connect deeply to local cultures, go on epic adventures, and grow closer as a family. In the last episode of World Towning, we visited Konya to explore the home of Rumi and the whirling dervishes. Now, Rumi was actually born in Afghanistan. His dad was a Sufi teacher, which is, comes from the word Sufism, which is an inner dimension of Islam. And in the meantime, we got caught up in the snow. What are you guys What are you guys doing? Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Oh my God! Hey! 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 Now we're heading east to Cappadocia to explore the magnificent valley and all of its amazing landscapes. We have, we have two-wheel drive and we're going downhill along a muddy path at this point and we're really concerned for, for our safety and for the safety of lemonade more than anything else. Um, we just need to make sure that we don't drift off the side of this road. This is, this is part of the adventure. This is not fun. Are you ready? Can I go? Yeah. Okay, you sure? Let me get down there. All right. I should be doing a better job of recording this, but I'm so freaking out right now. This is such a nightmare. Okay, here comes Will's gonna come down some more now. Okay. We're going a little bit into the abyss right here. I got a big boulder on one side, and I've got a mud sort of pit on the other side. Easy does it. We're getting there. You're okay, but if you start sliding, you're probably gonna hit it. He's doing an amazing job. Right now I'm thinking of that movie, The Blair Witch, that Blair Witch movie. I'm worried about wolves, I'm worried about the car. We're just, we're just, we're just taking this one inch at a time. The good part is that right now we're leveling off a little bit, so I am, I'm not that, whoa, wow. Okay, wait, I don't know which way, I don't know if we're out of danger yet, and I don't know which way, so let me get, Okay. there better be another way out of this. I don't know about that. No, there's no road there. There's no road there. What do you call that? There's a tree, honey. There's a tree in the middle of the road. Good morning from what looks like an amazing view here in Turkey. Check out lemonade. So last night's ride was a bit of a scary predicament. We basically went down what looked like it was like a, a narrow shoulder. Um, it was kind of wet, moist. Now, the question is, how are we gonna get out? <laughs> wow, it's so Yeah, beautiful. it's gonna be the challenge. You can see the tire tracks like right there. Mm -hmm. So the situation is kind of like this. Our friends said they had a fabulous spot here and they pinned it and gave it to us. But, and I just clicked on the Google and followed it, but we know how Google is sometimes and it takes us where it thinks is the shortest route. Well, this is what Google did. Laura, you know what you're missing out on? What? This is the perfect RVNN opportunity right here. Uh, There's your microphone. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of RVNN where the RV is stuck and we can't get it up. Now, we are going to have to have a big massive tractor pull us up. It is going to be impossible. Are you going to eat the mic? This calls for a separate microphone. It's serious. It's also oh. breakfast. <laughs> Walking towards a hotel, we're actually coming across right here. There's a campground, like just right after the turnoff where we went into. If we would have seen this, we would have probably stopped because we're smart enough. We would have realized, oh my gosh, it's late, it's dark. Um, maybe we can't really trust where we went, where clearly we couldn't. But we're gonna try this place because these people probably, I'm sure campgrounds like this have seen everything before. Um, I, I, let's let's just hope. How do you feel about today's adventure, Lardo? Me. Yeah? Just another day in the office? Mm-hmm. You seem to just roll the punches pretty good, you know that? 
Because we, we knew we couldn't get out. This area is but it's very, beautiful. This area is very big area. We have many things. Truck, You have bus. a lot of people that get stuck down there? Yes. <laughs> At the end of the day, they're all super assured that this is not going to be a problem. I don't think they've seen what we drove through. <laughs> their confidence is like off the hook. Some, I had some breakfast already. Sir, you want something? No, no, no. You sure? Okay. Thank you. What I need, thank you. Well, a wrong turn has turned into... New friends. The nicest people that we've met in all of our RVing experience. I know we say this, guys. We say this a lot. We're so amazed by the people that we meet along this journey of ours. I, I, but we came and we said, listen, our RV, we made a wrong turn. We're stuck down here. And they said, come in, sit down. Gave us, they offered us breakfast. We had, we had chai tea. Um, and they just started speaking to us and chatting and saying, don't worry, we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna take care of you, you're gonna be fine. I, as I was in Konya, I'm, I'm overjoyed with gratitude right now. I mean, I really, this, this doesn't happen every place in the world, but in general, people are so good. They're so good and so kind and so helping, and I can't... I know. Uh, and travel. Well, get traveling people. Well, it's also, so cool. call Google. Tell them to fix their, their map, because... Yeah, what the heck, <laughs> What's Google. going on with you? And vroom vroom. Here's Here we our go. tractor. Here we go. All right. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Is this exciting, Marco? Yep. Guys, living this life is the adventure of a lifetime, and no one ever said that if you don't take a chance, you don't get rewarded. This time, we take a chance, and we're getting rewarded with a tractor ride. Marco, what do you think about the tractor ride? Yeah. Life is amazing. All right, here. There we go. I can take this. Whoa. Holy baloney. <laughs> so at this point, I'm being pulled by this guy. This is the top corner. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. Here's the first rock. And there we go. Tree. Here we go. Tree. And. That's tight. Oh. Okay. There's a lot of shaky cam. Oh my gosh, you hear that? And my drama narration. And I'm hopping and puffing. I just made the first cut past the first rock. I'm pretty psyched about that. Eliminate. Sliding all over the place. Whoa! Alright. We're gonna make this happen, guys. But we're doing it. Oh my god, I can't believe this. He's spinning like mad. But we're, we're, we're making it happen, guys. Look at that tractor! It's a mighty tractor. All right, we made it past those big rocks. Oh. I might need some rocky. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay, goodness for good people. Impressive. Oh. Woo! This is definitely not us in a bikini vlogging from some exotic island. This is a real deal of travel. A wrong turn, and this is how it is. <laughs> Crazy. <sighs> the generosity of strangers. Just like that, guys, we have, we've averted crisis, and I have to, I have to admit, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, have a wonderful day. You guys did a great job. Do we still have to do Spanish or is that canceled? Spanish is canceled. Guess what, guys? What? Good news or bad news? April Fools, that didn't really happen. Oh, shush. <laughs> do you know what today is? April Fools' Day. That was, we just, we just kid, we just kidded that. That didn't really happen. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Let's go see Cappadocia. Let's go. Yeah, all right, guys, but first, 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 let's talk about our Morocco group trip. We've only got a handful of spots left, so who's in? Who wants to come? Last year, our family set out for Morocco on an eight-week trip that excited our minds and our senses. We left the country with a feeling of fulfillment that we have never before experienced in any other location. In December 2019, we are returning to this enchanting place, and we want to take you with us. 
Join our World Tanning Voyages community for 12 days of magic in Morocco. Together, we will become deeply immersed in this rich culture, exploring the sights, savoring the taste, and experiencing life up close and personal with the people who shape this warm and vibrant land. Our Morocco experience made us better travelers and opened our hearts in new and surprising ways. We are sure it will do the same for you. The group will be small to ensure an authentic experience. As such, space is limited, so don't delay. For information and to sign up, check out the link below. We hope to hear from you soon. Welcome to Cappadocia! I was kidding with that. That wasn't what I wanted. Okay, do it again, do it again, do it again. Go. Wide awake is the way that you left me. Sat beside in your car in the backseat. Wide awake is the way that you left me. Oh. Now it's clear we are here back at your house And I keep fading into the background I'm wide awake, now you keep missing out for sure I'm gonna beat you, I'm gonna pass you! Take down your walls and let me ooh Now that the drama's done, we're ready to explore Cappadocia. The most picturesque area probably in all of Turkey that we've seen so far. We're in a town called Gorem which is part of the Anatolia region, which is a high plateau region with a lot of volcanic activity. Not anymore, they're dormant now. And caves, and people actually still lived in some of these caves until the 1950s. Can you imagine? No, no. People without, what, back then, without air conditioning, <laughs> without electricity. Peter, oh my God. Oh my goodness. So today, we're actually down, in, we're in what's called Love Valley now. Love Valley is actually where the famous fairy chimneys are. And this is a fairy chimney right here. I'm going to be very careful to touch it because it's very porous and it falls, pieces fall off very easily. So what happened was there was a lot of volcanic activity, wind and rain, and these spires formed. Um, and then they formed like a little bit on the top. And you know, another thing they're famous for is they're kind of phallic looking, but move past that. Now, the biggest problem is that, and as I touch it very gently again, is that it's getting ruined by tourism and, and nature as well. But so many feet and hands are walking on this and touching it and pounding it and trying to pick pieces off that they speculate it's only gonna be around for us to see for about another half million years, which is really, really, really disappointing. So if you come here, be very careful. Don't take any pieces, don't slam on anything. Don't put your tripod on anything. We didn't do that, right, Will? No. This area was originally inhabited 4,500 years ago by the Hittites. And we were walking on this whole area. The canyon was also part of the Silk Road. So you can imagine just the mountains of different civilizations that went through this one piece of land. Check out this magnificent place. Avalon, what do you think so far? Well, since you say cool is not enough of a descriptive adjective, here come my synonyms for cool. This place is stupendous, tremendously awesome, beautiful, amazing. Um, and for some reason I can't figure out any more synonyms. There you go. That's cool, Evelyn. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> So these here in Cappadocia, these cave houses are like everywhere. They're popping up out of nowhere just on our brief little walk here. I mean, there's a whole little complex here with like stairs and it looks like it was a village once upon a time. People came here to like either escape persecution or escape life. Um, and they built a home here over the centuries. This place, look at this. I mean, can you imagine? It's freezing, but it is, you know, it's very homey. Jessica, do you think you can live here? Um, I think someone does live here. Look, they've etched their name into the wood here. This almost looks like a gate. This is their yard. I wonder if you could just live here for free and then maybe the government comes and cleans people out. Because we've seen a couple houses like this already, like the makeshift ones, but it appears that no one's still living in it. I can imagine someone actually used this place like a crash pad because look at this. They have the plastic lining here, which if they put like a, a heater, like a gas heater, they can sort of get, keep themselves warm. There's a package of food in there that has been emptied out, but it was from February of this year, so only like about two months ago. Yeah, um, people actually probably still live here, at least on a temporary basis. I think we need to get to the bottom of this wall. And then they have all these terraces and all this up there, amazing. Not a bad place to live. No, and they get the view of the balloon, which you can't really see because it's, I have to zoom in, but, but either way. I could live here if it wasn't winter. 
Can anyone else stay out here all day with me? Yep. <laughs> We are back at the scene of the crime. We're back at the scene of the crime. Well, actually, the scene of the crime was up that hill, but we actually parked right here for the night. I, I really didn't, I really thought that was gonzo for lemonade. Not for us, I didn't fear for our safety, but for lemonade, I thought. I, it, it just seemed like it was, it was hard to get out because it was still raining, but now it's dry, it's kind of nice. Beautiful. And there's, I, it's, there's no one else around. No, it makes me want to drive down here. <laughs> no way. Well, we, now I know how to get, get back up. You do know how to get down right now. You're right. Are we going to have a picnic down here? There's no people down here. It's amazing. It's like we found the only spot in Cappadocia where no one goes. By accident. By accident. So hard to see From the moment we arrive Cornelia You are one who will survive So that was one heck of a roller coaster ride that we went on. Um, at the end of the day, let's put it this way: we have an amazing view now, but the cost that we went through to get on this amazing view was like an emotional stress monster. <laughs> Now, I will say that if you're watching this and you're like, oh my God, there was so much danger. We were actually not in danger and I wasn't fearing for our life or anything. I was, I was fearing for Lemonade's life because these things are not made well. So if she was to slide into a rock, she could have had a big dent in her. But like anything in life, you have to take these risks and these chances. And I don't know if I would say we took a risk. We kind of started down this and realized we can't get out. So we have to kind of keep going. We ride the roller coaster all the way down. All the way down. <laughs> So the question of the vlog is this, if you are in a foreign country where you don't speak the language and you're not sure if you know how to go ahead and salvage a situation like this, how would you react? Would you just stay calm, cool and collected or would you freak out? And remember guys, I'll just end with this bit. Ask for help. It took me a long time to get to this point in my life where I was comfortable asking for help when we needed it. And a stranger will come to your to your aid. And it happens if you're in all Turkey, the time. Uh, really, really, really kind strangers will come to oh, your aid. Oh, the people are so nice. And if someone needs help, don't forget to offer them some help. Okay, with that, we're out of here. Bye, Bye. guys. In the next episode of World Towning, we get front and center in the main event of what Cappadocia is famous for: hot air balloons. Look at this behind me. Wow. I mean, really. 75 to 100 balloons up in the air, just like that. This happens every single day here. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notifications icon to ensure that you get all of our episodes the moment they are released. Wow. To see this when I'm not winded, exhausted, and panicking, these tracks from Lemonade are still etched in the mud here. And then this massive, the massive tire tracks are here. And the, tire, the tractor just ate it up like a boss. Look at this, look at Lemonade. Oh, I'm just gonna slide down this hill like the delicate little RV I am.